Okay, how's it going? Um, I've been having a heck of a time. I, I'm still trying to get out of the rain. Um, so I moved into the carport. Uh, I'm, I am not going to shoot these indoors. I want to be outside, so by gosh, I'm gonna do it. So anyway, so we're here at the carport now, um, and hopefully we can stay dry and then get through this next topic. Um, so we're gonna start talking about um, First, we're going to talk about biological molecules in general, and then we're going to talk about the, the common classes of biological molecules. And we already talked about one. When I talk about class, like we talked about hydrocarbons earlier, right? And we want to know these different classes and know what, what builds them, how they're built, and, and general characteristics of them. It really helps you to understand what's going on. So this first group that we're going to look at are the carbohydrates. Now again, why do I need to know this? We talked about why chemistry is important. You have to understand chemistry if you want to understand biology. All living things are made of four basic types of molecule. All right, and so by understanding these different types and understanding the properties, it really helps you to understand what's going on in these living things. And so that's why we're going to talk about these um, different classes of biological molecules. And so the four classes that we're going to talk about are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And again, this may be a review for some of you, and that's great. Um, I'm sure you've heard of all these different types of molecules at one point or another. And so I, I just want to talk about them, describe their structure, and then um, we're going to be using this information throughout the whole semester. Now, before we talk about specific classes, let's talk about, in general, biological macromolecules. Remember I said that, that biological molecules tend to be very big molecules. And they're made up of building blocks called monomers. And so monomers are put together to make a polymer. And so that small monomer is the building block. You put a bunch together, it's called a polymer and that's a big macromolecule. So these are all terms that you've heard before and we're gonna be using throughout the semester. So for example, uh, simple sugars are monomers, or building blocks of more complex carbohydrates and the complex carbohydrates called the polymer, all right? And so for each of these classes of molecules, we're gonna learn what is the monomer and how those monomers are put together to make the polymer. So, in this example, or in this lecture, we're talking about carbohydrates, and their building blocks are simple sugars. And um, in the carbohydrates, you know, we call the simple sugars are carbohydrates. When you put a bunch together to make a big polymer, that's also a carbohydrate. That's not always true for all of these things. Um, if you look here, there's some common six carbon uh, simple sugars that we're looking at in this slide here. Again, think back to what we talked about with uh, um, basic organic chemistry. It's, you know, carbon is always sort of the backbone of it. So you see this carbon backbone. Um, you've got several different types here again, just by where the double bond is. Um, these all have the, uh, the same molecular formula, but where the double bond is makes them a different molecule with different properties. Small changes at the molecular level can lead to big changes at the organismal level. Um, and so if you look at this closely, you see on each of these carbons, we have, uh, at least most of the carbons anyway, you have an H and an OH attached to each carbon. Each carbon has a hydroxyl functional group attached to it, except for one. And so what's HOH? H2O, water. And so you've got carbons with water, or you've got hydrated carbons that's where you get the term carbohydrate from. So later on, in, you know, I'm going to uh, flash up a, a diagram of a molecule, and I'm going to ask you, hey, what kind of molecule is this? Well, this is one of the things you look for. If you see a bunch of carbons and all the carbons have water attached to them, oh, that's a carbohydrate. So carbohydrates in general... Um, have two broad functions in living organisms. They act as fuel and they act as building material. And so um, 
again, you're probably familiar with a lot of this, uh, sugars, starches, these are carbohydrates and these are things that most animals use for fuel or most living organisms use for fuel. And so these are things, these are types of molecules that you can break down, break those bonds. When you break those bonds, you release the energy. You can capture that energy and put it into different chemical bonds. And you can use that energy to build your own molecules and do things for your body. Uh, carbohydrates can also have structural properties. So for example, cellulose, um, which is uh, mostly found in plants, um, that's a structural carbohydrate. Chitin, which is found in animals and fungi, that's also a carbohydrate that has a structural function. So we'll talk about these in a little bit more detail. So sugars are carb carbohydrates. And like I said, we can call the, the monomer, the building block, the simple sugar, we call that a carbohydrate, or you put a bunch of those uh, monosaccharides together to get a, a polysaccharide or a complex carbohydrate. Those are all carbohydrates, right? And so we, we saw some of those earlier, Glu uh, glucose, fructose. Now, um, you can just put two simple sugars together and you get a disaccharide, right? Monosaccharide is one sugar, disaccharide is two sugars. Um, and so these are just, again, common sources of fuel, um, especially for, well, it's common sources of fuel for, for living organisms. So you take a glucose and a fructose together, you make sucrose, table sugar, right? You put a glucose and a galactose together, you get lactose, milk sugar. Um, and so these are simple sugars. They're not very big. They're not really a macromolecule. They still have energy in them. Um, they don't have as much energy as a complex carbohydrate simply because they don't have as many chemical bonds. But they are small and um, easily digestible because they're small. Now one thing, uh, if you notice anything about the names, we've seen the names of several sugars. Uh, glucose, fructose, galactose, lactose, sucrose, right? If it ends in os, it's probably a sugar. So this is something else you just want to be comfortable with, right? If, if I give you a name of something and it ends in os, pretty good bet it's a sugar, it's a carbohydrate. As I said, simple sugars are small and they break down easily. And so, um, these are things that get into your bloodstream quickly and give you a quick burst of energy, but it doesn't last long because they, um, although, you know, they break down easily, but there's not a lot of bonds there. So they don't hold a ton of energy. Um, we mentioned how carbon, when you get five or six carbons together, it starts to form a ring sometimes. And in different situations, it might be linear and other situations, it might be a ring form. Um, this is our most famous carbohydrate that we're going to see again and again and again, glucose, right? So um, most of your food, no matter what it is, whether it's a protein or, or a lipid or a nucleic or, 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 you know, a carbohydrate, it all eventually gets broken down to glucose and glucose is what is used to, what you, you eventually break down to make ATP. And we'll talk about that in, in a lot more detail later. Um, one thing about um, the ring form of glucose or any ring form, um, this is something that you'll, you'll learn when you, you, you do more organic chemistry. Um, you have to think about this three-dimensional shape. And so it's a ring, which is kind of a plane, but then molecules attached to those carbons can stick up or stick below. And in this, this figure that you see here, you can kind of see it, right? You can see that some of the molecules are on top of the ring and some of the molecules stick down on the bottom of the ring. So you always want to think about three-dimensional structure. Again, it makes a difference, right? If you have, uh, you, for example, you see these, um, you've got several hydroxyls that are on the bottom of the ring, the way it's drawn in this slide, right? Well, if, if, if one of those flips and is on the top of the ring, that's a completely different molecule. It has completely different chemical properties. Now, one thing I think is interesting, um, again, is by understanding and, and recognizing the structure of a particular molecule, um, it helps you to understand a lot more of what, what happens to it. And this particular, here's a, a disaccharide. This is a table sugar, right? Sucrose. And you can see the two rings. Each of those is a monosaccharide. And you, they're, they're bound together. 
And so if you look at this uh, diagram, you can see you know, this is the general structure of sucrose. And you know what sugar tastes like, and you, you've had sugar before, right? Now this molecule that is on the lower right now is what's called sucralose. Uh, the trade name is Splenda. And so it's an artificial sweetener, right? So this is the stuff that I like to put in my coffee. And so this is something that gives you a sweet taste, but it doesn't give you any calories. You can't break it down. And so although it gives you the sweetness, it just passes right through you. Your body does not is not able to break it apart and harvest the energy in this molecule. Um, so you get the pleasant sweet taste, but it doesn't you don't get any energy from it. Now if you look at, at Splenda here and compare it to the structure of sucrose, you can see why this works because look at these two. These two structures are very similar. You've got a six carbon ring and a five carbon ring attached together. You've got a lot of the functional groups are in the exact same spot. The only difference is in, uh, in, in a few spots here on the sucralose, you had a hydroxyl group, one of those functional groups, removed and replaced with a chlorine. And so you've got you know three chlorines that have replaced hydroxyls. And so it's got a similar shape to sucrose, and so it binds to those sweet, uh, the, those taste buds, those uh, 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 sensory molecules in your taste buds that, that sense sweetness. So because it's got a similar shape to sucrose, it'll bind to those sweet taste buds, but it's just different enough that your body can't break it down. So very small change at the molecular level has a big change at the organismal level. So this is why understanding the chemistry helps to explain how these things work in your body. Now sugars uh, tend to be small and simple and easy to digest. And so you get energy from them, but not a lot of energy and you get that energy quickly. Starches are large and complex carbohydrates. Okay, and these are also used as fuel, but those complex carbohydrates stay in your bloodstream longer. And they have a lot more energy, but it gets released more slowly because these are harder to digest. Um, and so, again, uh, we had a monosaccharide and a disaccharide. These starches are polysaccharides, many saccharides, many sugars joined together to make a very long chain, all right? And so for example, if you take um, a lot of glucose molecules and you stitch them together in a large chain, that's amylose, that's starch. And so again, it's that same building block, this, you know, the, the, the simple sugar is easy to digest, but you put a bunch of those together and you get a very long molecule. And sometimes you get a long straight one and sometimes it has branches that coming off. Um, well, this is how plants store energy. And so um, if a plant has excess energy, all organisms, if you have excess energy, you tend to store it. And so then you can retrieve that energy later if you need it. So when plants store energy, they store energy as starches. They put lots of glucose molecules together into these long, complex carbohydrates. And so if you think about foods that are starchy, potatoes, bread, rice, flour, those are all plant-based. And so that's because the plants are storing energy as these carbohydrates, as these complex carbohydrates. And so consequently, um, an animal comes along, that's a good thing to eat. You know, you, you eat the, the root or you eat the fruit, you eat the part of the plant where they store these complex carbohydrates because you get a lot of energy because that's how the plant is storing the energy. And so when you need energy, that's why it helps to eat starchy foods, right? Those starchy foods have lots of energy in them. Now, plants pretty much exclusively, when they have to store excess energy, they store it as carbohydrates. 
animals, we don't usually store energy as carbohydrates. When we have excess energy, what do we do? We store it as fat, right? Um, however, we do store some excess energy in the form of carbohydrate. Glycogen is a type of carbohydrate that we, um, we use to store energy. Um, but typically, if we have excess energy, we're gonna store it as fat instead of a complex carbohydrate like glycogen. Glycogen is, is just one of a few ways we store energy as carbohydrate. And you're gonna find this mainly in the liver and muscle. And so here's an example, just kind of showing micrographs of these uh, starch granules or glycogen granules. Um, you know, one's in a plant, one's in an animal. Um, and then you can see kind of a representation of the structure of these complex carbohydrates. And so if you look close, you see that they are long strands of simple sugars linked together. And like I said, sometimes it's just a long straight line. Sometimes it has branches coming off. But these are made of monosaccharides, but lots of them, so we call them polysaccharides. And so again, you can see all these rings. Each one of those rings is a simple sugar. Um, but there are tons of them stuck together. They're super long. And so there's tons of chemical bonds. Every one of those bonds stores energy. Whenever you break those bonds, you can harvest that energy. This is why they last longer in your blood. So if you drink a sugary drink, those simple sugars get in your blood very quickly. They're broken down very quickly. So you get a, you know, an immediate burst of energy, but then it doesn't last. Whereas complex carbohydrates, um, it takes longer to digest. You have to break them down piece by piece by piece. And so they give you a long drawn out source of energy. Like we said, they, they serve as fuel. Carbohydrates serve as fuel and building material. Uh, we talked about fuel. Let's talk about building material or structural carbohydrates. Uh, structural polysaccharides. Uh, the most common one, maybe the most common carbohydrate on earth, probably the most common car carbohydrate on earth is cellulose. Um, and cellulose is very similar to starch. Um, plants make both of them, right? Remember that plants store energy as starch, um, but they make their cell walls out of cellulose. And that's very, it's a very tough, very rugged carbohydrate. And it does a very good job of being structural, but it's much harder to digest, right? So, you know, you as a human, you're an omnivore. You eat meat, you also eat uh, fruits, you eat plants, um, but when you eat the plants, um, you know you don't. You only digest certain parts, and so if you go to eat a you know a potato or an apple off an apple tree, right, you're eating that that part of the plant where it's storing starch, and you're getting that you can digest. Um, however, if you eat something like lettuce or celery, um, you know you're eating a lot of cellulose, but you're not digesting that cellulose. That cellulose is going right through you. What you're doing is you're, you know, you're getting some energy, you're breaking open the cells and the, and the stuff that's inside the cell is what you're digesting. So that cellulose is very similar to starch, but as far as you're concerned, um, it's very different because you can't get any energy from cellulose. Uh, since you can't digest it, it, it you know, it, cellulose is important in your diet. Um, and we call it fiber. And so it's, it's a tough molecule that you can't digest, but it does help you poop. And it does help you to, uh, um, you know, form feces. And, it, and it, uh, so it does have an importance in your diet, but you're not getting energy from it. Now, again, what's interesting is if you look at the molecular structure. So on the top, we've got um, a, a small segment of starch. And on the bottom, we've got a small segment of cellulose. And these are both made from glucose. They're both made by sticking glucoses together. But look at what they've highlighted. In the top, the hydroxyl groups are all underneath, or the highlighted hydroxyl groups are all on the bottom of the glucose, right? 
And so um, it's, it's a particular type of glucose um, that has all the hydroxyls or the, the hydroxyls are arranged all underneath. And so if you have glucose and you connect them this way, you make a starch molecule. And if you ate a starch molecule, you could digest it and get energy from it. On the bottom, you've got the same glucose molecule, but it's just, they're attached differently. You see that one hydroxyl's on the bottom, the next hydroxyl's on the top. I'm talking about these, these highlighted hydroxyls. The next one's on the bottom. And so all it is, is you're taking the glucose and you're attaching it differently. But if you do it that way, you make a cellulose molecule and that's something that you can't digest. That is a very subtle difference at the molecular level, but it makes a huge difference at the organismal level. Um, so cellulose is a structural protein that's used mainly by plants. In animals, the most common structural, uh, nice and structural protein. I didn't mean that. I'll take that back right now. Zzz. Cellulose is a very common structural carbohydrate that's used by plants. But the most common structural carbohydrate that's used by animals is chitin. And, um, and so the most common use of chitin in the animal world is the uh, exoskeleton of insects or of arthropods. Um, and so it's a very lightweight, waterproof, but very strong carbohydrate. And so it's very good for an exoskeleton. Uh, fun, fungi also use it. And so fungi have a cell wall, but their cell wall is not made of cellulose. It's made of chitin. And so here's just an example and um, uh, showing you a chitin monomer. You see it actually has a little nitrogen in it, but in general, it's very similar to other carbohydrates. And it makes for a very, again, tough, lightweight, strong molecule, which can be used for things such as uh, sutures that will eventually dissolve. Okay, so that is just some general characteristics of carbohydrates. Um, we're gonna talk in the next few lectures, we're going to talk about some of the other classes of biological molecules. So I will see you then.